We're hugging the coast and indeed we're heading down south. We'll make a turn, however, at the bottom edge of this island and it's at this point where it'll become a cross headwind and really could become something of a drag. So will it be fast men or strong men today or maybe a combination of the two? Gosh, listen to the farewell roar we got from Tortoni. Amazing support we've had so far during this race. They're coming up towards the line now, so we'll get a closer look. Hopefully, in just a few moments time. Certainly looks to be someone from Trek Segafredo. Tickle Hamer not, not able to get the better of them at that point. So I would assume that that is Jasper Stoyan there. He's it's so exposed down here by the sea. Uh, some water on either side of the road, not a tree in sight, and the wind blowing very hard from the right hand side. 22.4, probably a hat in there somewhere as well. Really Team Sky on the left hand side of the road and they're taking much of the wind at the moment. I'm not allowed to think they're regretting it. Look at them wobble. Yeah, they're really struggling to, to handle their bikes actually. So strong is the wind out there today. And uh, looking at uh, the wheels that they've been using for the day stage, they have chosen a relatively shallow section of the rim. So it makes it even more remarkable that they're struggling to keep their bikes upright at the moment. Caleb Ewan is just in the right place at the right time because I think they're just coming up to a point in the road where it will uh, gradually move around to the left. And they've got an extremely exposed road to deal with from around about eight kilometers to go until around the five kilometers to go mark where they'll make that right hand turn. The inevitability really is that it's going to come back together anyway because the last five kilometers of the stage are into a headwind but no one can take any chances. They've all got to make sure they're at the front. This is that point down where we go between three kilometers to go and two, it's protected. So the wind is not the same impact and I think there's a regathering behind them. In fact, the gap is starting to close and here are those that are hyper motivated to actually close Close it. Here we go, Dan. Yeah, here we go. About 400 metres to go. Now, Nathan has tried to spring a surprise. That's going to be very difficult to do, oh. given the headwind that they're experiencing at the moment. And, and he managed to do so. He's going for it. Big dig. Max Richese straight on the back wheel of Nathan Haas. He brings the Australian back to Team Dimension Data. And Solo is in third place. They've got to leave the sprint late, though. They have, and uh, they're opening up the centre. And you and I, as well done, but you've had He's going for this one, it's going to be him, he's got the backup, he's got the win, oh he's taken it on the day, but look at the gaps, it's down to the wind and quality work by quick step floors and boy is that important for them. What a day, what a day then. Wow, what a win for Fernando Gaviria, the Colombian taking a sprint day on day three of this 100th Giro d'Italia. The main group led in by Caleb Ewan, but today is all about this man, and that Carlton was thoroughly well deserved.